Looks like the Martians have landed. Yeah. What's with all the masks? I thought we were in the clear now. Maybe there's still something they're not telling us. Hey, Bing, what's going on? Environmental health. They're disinfecting the whole estate. They say it's just an added precaution, nothing to be alarmed about. Oh, yeah. Well, if there's nothing to be alarmed about, why are they still wearing masks? But just for their own protection, Ron. Yeah, well, I think there's more to all of this than meets the eye. I think we should have a residence meeting and get to the bottom of it. Is right. I really don't think that's necessary now. No, it's a good idea, Bing. People need reassuring that everything's back to normal. I mean, the old thing's been well dodgy. So what you say, then? Tonight at your place? Uh, well, actually, that could be just a little awkward at the moment. Well, I'm sorry, mate, but you are the chairman, and this is an official crisis. Correct. If you can't support the residents during a time like this, then we might have to consider a vote of non-confidence. Oh, very well. I'll uh, let the other residents know today. Nice one, Bing. See you later, then, eh? Right. See you, Bing. Hello. Oh, hello, love. I wasn't expecting you this early. Oh, it's lovely to be home. How are you doing? Oh, I'm feeling a bit better. Still sick in the mornings. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, I'd love one, please. Oh, is there another letter? Yeah, I got it today. Same handwriting. I could get my hands on whoever's writing them. I'd kill them. Where's Rachel? Um, school. She knows you're moving back in now. I told her this morning. Yeah, and how did she take it? Well, better than expected. I think she's finally calming down. <laughs> well, that's good, cos I'm running out of floor to sleep on. <laughs> <laughs> Mum? Hello. What on earth are you doing? I'm just going to open up the florist. You just dropped off, Thomas and Alice. You've just had a very serious illness. You should be resting. I have been resting all weekend. I'm just glad to be up and about again. Hello. Jean. <sighs> I didn't expect to see you here today, love. Yeah, well, she should be at home taking things easy. I feel 100% and I don't want to sit at home twiddling my thumbs. Ron, you tell her. Well... I mean, if your mum feels well enough to work, far be it for me to talk it out of it. I've been losing money hand over fist with boat shops being shut. Oh, right, so you put your profit margins before the health of your staff, yeah? I feel perfectly fine. Look, I'm sure Ron can find someone else to look after the place. Well, not really, no. And I haven't got the time to be advertising and interviewing people. Not with Easter coming up. And if this shop stays closed any longer, we shall lose all the custom we have built up. Well, you're not working, and that is final. Well, somebody's got to run the place. All right, then. If you're that desperate, I'll do it. You? You? Yes, me. Well, if it's the only way I can get you back home, I don't really have much choice, do I? Is that all right with you, Ron? Just temporarily, till Mum's completely better? You sure you can manage it? It's hard work, you know. I'm a big girl now, Ron. I'm sure I can cope. Just give me half an hour. Come along, you. I'm taking you home. Aye, aye. You skiving? Oh. I had to come home. I wasn't feeling a bit well. How do you mean? Oh, just stomach pains. Stomach pains? Oh, don't go convincing yourself I've got this plague. That, I had a bait and butty this morning and think that set it off. I feel all right now. I'll probably go back in the savvy. Anyway, why aren't you in work? I'm not you in for another hour. I've been on for a bit. What for? For this. I suppose you could call it a belated 40th birthday present. Oh, don't it? Been around the travel agents. Me and you were going to Tenerife, love. You're joking? Yeah, they had some really good offers, so I thought, why not? <gasps> we fly out in September. I uh, think we deserve it after all we've been through lately, don't you? Oh, I can't believe this. I can't remember the last time we've had an holiday. Well, it was with all that money we nearly lost from that dodgy timeshare business. I thought we may as well enjoy it. And uh, we could always call it a second honeymoon. Oh, love. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> oh. Hiya. All right, Beth. So, back in the nest, eh? I've got nowhere else to go. Well, you certainly chose the right time to be away with this virus and everything. Ooh, hang on, what's this? Mmm, cake. Well, I was still feeling a bit guilty about missing Rachel's birthday, so I thought now the quarantine had been lifted, we could have a bit of a belated party for her. What yeah, do you think? That's a lovely idea. Well, I'm game, yeah. Anything for a good do, me. Just the four of us tomorrow now that Beth's home. Well, I can't. I've got university, haven't I? Oh, look, do you have to go in? Yeah, sorry. Anyway, I think it's better if we let Rachel get used to the fact that I'm home first. Um, are you going to ask Lee around? I think Rachel would like it. I wasn't going to, no. 
Well, the more the merrier. I'll ring her friends and Chantelle and get them to come round. Oh, I'm not sure about that. I don't like the idea of all kinds of people wandering around the house, not after everything that's happened. Well, why not? You've got nothing to hide now. I think we should charge an admission fee. Now that everybody knows, we might as well exploit the situation, turn this place into a theme park. Oh, Beth, it just doesn't seem right throwing big parties with the court case and everything coming up. I meant just the four of us. Mum, it'll be a good opportunity to show people we're getting on with our lives. And besides, some of the neighbours have been really good to us. It'll be a way of thanking them. And anyway, we've got nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, and I think Rachel would be made up. I mean, she seems to have really settled down the last couple of days. OK, you talked me into it. Max, just to let you know, I've called a meeting of the Residents Association this evening. I think people need to get a lot of things off their chests, come to terms with the impact of the last few weeks. Are you sure Jean's up to it? Well, it would appear so. In fact, she's made a miraculous recovery. You'd never think she'd been ill. <laughs> Anything more in the paper? Yes. There's an article here I wanted you to see. Ah. There's a quote from one of the medical team. They say it appears likely that the infection was brought in by George Manners following one of his jaunts abroad. How could they possibly prove that? I don't think we're ever going to get a satisfactory answer, are we? It's going to be one theory after another. Oh, Mick Johnson gets a mention. Oh, really? What does it say? They refer to him, look here, as the, uh, the hero of the plague. Oh, well, I suppose he was, really, in a way. And listen to this about Barry Grant. Local entrepreneur Barry Grant, who owns a nearby shopping precinct and nightclub, risked his life on a daily basis by allowing the dying victims and their families to use his home as a makeshift waiting room for the emergency health centre which was brought in during the quarantine. Rubbish. It's utter rubbish. I mean, Barry Grant jets off to Florida at the first available opportunity, leaving me up to my eyes in problems. And now they're trying to make out that he's some sort of martyr. I mean, oh, life just isn't fair. Oh, well, Max, look on the bright side. At least we've still got our health. Yeah, and you've still got cheap. Right, I better get going. Right, I'll uh, I'll see you later. Bye bye. All right, Ron. All right, Ed. Uh, just this time, mate. You off today then? No, I'm just on my way. I'm glad to be back. I tell you that. You know, I don't know how those poor sods cope on their own for years, stuck in the house all day with nothing to do but watch daytime telly's you. I know. I think we'd have all gone mad if that quarantine had gone on any longer. Still. Might have saved me a few bob, though. At least Bev wasn't able to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of the lads were a bit standoffish with me at work, though, yesterday. I think they thought they were going to catch something, you know. Yeah, scary, isn't it, eh? You can be just getting on with your life, man, and your own business, and a boom, something like this happens. Yeah. Hey, uh, any news of this uh, mystery pregnancy? I just know it's not Bev, mate, and that's all I care about. Hey, still could be your Rosie, though. Oh, don't be wishing that on me, Rob. <laughs> but you never know, do you? I believe the doctors want one final sample of all the residents, then whoever it is should find out then. How long will that take, though? A few days, I suppose. Why? Who do you think it could be? Well, you've got me paranoid now for a start. God, it'd be terrible if it was, Rosie. I think I'm a bit long on the tooth for sleepless nights and dirty nappies. <laughs> yeah, well, there's nothing you can do, mate, is there? Except wait and hope for the best. There's no need to knock. It's your room, too. How are you feeling? Fine. It was Patricia who insisted I get into bed. Ah. Jean, um, I, uh, we need to talk. Right. What should we talk about? The weather? State of the Royals? Audrey's funeral? You know what I want to talk about. David. I might have been married to you for 41 years, but that does not give me instant access to the workings of your mind. I'll just get that. Hi. Oh, it's you. I brought some flowers for Mrs Crosby. Right, well, she, she gets them. She's not really up to receiving visitors at the moment. Well, will you let her know that they're from me, Mum and Rachel? Who is it, David? It's me and Mrs Crosby, Beth. Make it brief, will you? Mrs. Crosby's supposed to be resting. There you go, Pat. Oh, really, there's no need. Oh, you want to look the part, don't you, love? Besides, you'll mess up all your good clothes. Really? 
Oh, well, I suppose if you're not happy about it, I could always ask your mum to come in. I'm sure she'd be keen. No, there's no need for that. I'm quite happy to muck in until mum is fully fit. Good girl. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. Your mum generally makes me a cup of tea when she's doing one for herself. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, actually, I drink herbal tea. OK. Well, on second thoughts, I think I'll give it a miss. <laughs> I'm sick to the back teeth of all this health stuff. We'll go well soon, won't you? <laughs> we'll. See you soon. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks again for the flowers, Bert. All right. Why did you have to be so abrupt with her? I wasn't abrupt. Oh, what's the matter with you? Don't you like the idea that there's a lesbian in the same room? I think I won't be able to contain myself. Jean. Oh, don't look so shocked, David. I know how your mind works. This may come as a surprise to you, but not everybody keeps their brains between their legs. I wanted Beth to leave because I needed to talk to you. I'm all ears. Look, I just need to know what you want me to do. You've heard my confession about Audrey, but you just haven't given me any kind of reaction. And what reaction would you like? Would you like me to rip up all your clothes, throw you out, sit crying for days on end? I just need to know if you'll ever be able to forgive me. Just like that. You only told me about Audrey because you thought I was going to die. You didn't do it for my benefit or for the state of our relationship, but out of pure selfishness, because you thought that it would make it somehow easier for you to go on living if you had a clear conscience. That's not true. Isn't it? If you were really so racked with guilt for all these months, why did you wait until I was on my deathbed before you made your sordid little confession? If you really needed to get it off your chest, why didn't you tell me sooner? I'll tell you something, David, that I have learned over these past few days, and it is how precious life is, and I am not going to let you or anyone else spoil what little time I might happen to have left. So if you have come here looking for forgiveness, you have come to the wrong person! Tiny. All set for yet another residence meeting. Oh, gosh, I forgot all about it. After today, that's the last thing I feel like. Mm, you not had a good day? Well, to be frank, no. Because I only got in this morning to discover this. What is it? A letter of resignation from Emma Piper. Oh, really? That's why I've been spending the whole day unsuccessfully trying to find a replacement. I'm going to have to go back in tonight. I wonder if it's because of the split. Well, Barry Grant should have listened to me the first time round. I sucked her. I mean, she's unreliable. I told you, didn't I? So, yet another of Barry Grant's whirlwind romances is over. I wonder what caused it this time. Well, there's no way of finding out what with Barry gallivanting off around Florida. You know, he really has left me in a mess, arranging for Carl Banks to spend more of his time working at the club. And now this. You know, if things get any worse, I'll be running that restaurant single-handedly. Hi, Dad. Hi, everyone. Oh, oh Patsy, Dad. Hello. You'll be a dear, won't you, oh, Taxi? Yes. Oh. Yes, Dad, yes. Hi, Mum. Oh, 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 yes. Hello. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hello. 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 Well, all the victims, George and Audrey included, are going to be buried next week. The pathologists have finished their investigations, and I understand the bodies were released earlier today. Do you know what? It could be any one of us in that morgue today. Yeah, well, let's just be grateful we're all still here, eh? I was thinking maybe we should have some kind of a collection. That's an excellent idea, Rosie. Flowers from the Residents Association to all the victims' families. Patsy, put that down, please. I would appreciate it if you kept this as brief as possible. I'm due at the restaurant tonight. Yes, yes, of course. Right, well, I declare this meeting officially open. Patsy? Now, I've called it because of the obvious fears and anxieties of the entire community. We've all been through a lot these past few weeks, and despite the lifting of the cordon, it's still understandable that some residents are quite apprehensive. You can say that again. I mean, no-one's even actually told us what it really was. Well, the authorities appear to be in agreement that the virus was most likely brought into the country by George Manners. So at least the cause has been pinpointed. 
Some unidentified infection picked up on his travels abroad, I believe. It's mad. You just assume that our laws prevent that kind of thing from happening, don't you? Well, I reckon that the minutes of this meeting should be sent to the government. This can't be allowed to happen again, Bing. No, you're right, Ron. I think Parliament should be informed of what we've all been through. Never mind Parliament. We should send this one straight to John Major. Because if it is a cover-up, well, he might know anything about it. They could be tampering with our tap water. I mean, we could be human guinea pigs. Hey, you, in some new experiment, couldn't we? I mean, it happened in Vietnam. There was a film I saw about it. They all went mad, started killing each other. Beverly, I think we should steer clear of any scaremongering. We're here to ease residents' anxieties. Well, that's all very well, but I don't think we can be any more scared than we have been. We've just spent the last couple of weeks not knowing whether we're going to live or die, and I, for one, want some answers. Yeah, Bev's right. I mean, how can we be certain everything's back to normal? Eddie saw some fellas on the close today and all the gear. They were spraying everywhere. That's just an added precaution, I believe. That's one good thing that's come out of it all. At least we've got the cleanest streets in Liverpool. <laughs> well, the word from the medical team is that everything can now return to normal. Well, how come that makeshift surgery is still stuck on the close, then? I shouldn't imagine it'll be there much longer, Ron. Which reminds me, I'm afraid they require one more sample from you. Oh. Oh. The medical team have issued me with these sample bottles to be distributed to everyone at the close of the meeting. I think it's just an added precautionary safety measure, that's all. We hope. Well, I'm sure if there was any real threat of any danger, they wouldn't have lifted the cordon. Well, the whole purpose of this meeting was to put people's minds at rest, dispose of any myths that may be floating about. It's a fact that there are millions of unknown virus strains throughout the world, and the medical profession cannot be sure where, if, or when another could strike. I know it's claimed it's victims, but we really should be counting our blessings. Things could have been much worse. We can't live our lives in fear of this happening again. I mean, we could be knocked down by a bus tomorrow. I think we must just appreciate how lucky we are and carry on where we left off. Here, here, Jean. Well, on that positive note, I really ought to be off. I've got some things to sort out before I go to the restaurant. Excuse me. Uh, right, well, any other points to be raised? I think we all needed a bit of reassuring, really. <sighs> so, is that it? Would appear so. Right, well, it's um, 6.45, and I'll bring this brief but highly successful meeting to a close. Thank you all. Uh, hang on, before you all start getting off, um, I'd just like to say, um, me and Mandy would like to invite you all over to ours for a party tomorrow night. It's Rachel's 16th. Oh. And I think you could all do with one after what we've been through lately. So you're all welcome. Uh, everybody, please, before you go, don't forget these. Uh, the medical team said they want these in by no later over there front door. God knows how many bodies have got buried under those floorboards. <laughs> OK, Mum, um, I'm off. Take care. Mm. Get yourself back into bed, OK? So, how's your Rosie doing? Has she had any cravings for sugar butties yet? <laughs> Don't even joke about it, Ron. Listen, mate, I've been thinking, you know, I might be able to help you out there. Bev's still got one of those pregnancy testing kit thingies in the house, and uh, well, I thought if you could get hold of Rosie's sample, well, then you could find out for sure, couldn't you? You what? Oh, no, I couldn't, no. Could I? Do you want me to pop around with it? I don't suppose it's turn here, am I? No, they do knock me sick, though, that George Ashlock. I mean, acting like nothing's happened, all sweetness and light. Better make a move, Ed. Yeah. See ya. Yeah, ta-da. Thanks, Thanks, Bing. Thanks, Rosie. Hey, we better make a move ourselves. Josh is starving, yep. aren't you, babe? Now, you take it easy, Jean, and you make sure you look after her. She'll be waiting on hand and foot. Tra. Well, thanks for coming along. It was one of the best turnouts the BRA has seen for ages. Ta-da, Bing. Bye-bye. <sighs> Calm after the storm. Yes, I, uh, I thought it went rather well. I'm very pleased. Is that all you have to say? What do you want me to say? Well, I thought now that we were on our own, there might be a few other things you'd like to get off your chest. <laughs> well, I, I really don't know what more I can say, Jean. What do you want to hear? <sighs> do I have to write the script for you as well? Well, uh, look, I, I think I'll take a quick stroll. I need to clear my head. I'll uh, see you later. Give yourself indigestion again. Well, I can't slow down. I'm due back at the restaurant. You're supposed to be your own boss. Surely you can allow yourself some time off to relax and have a meal. <laughs> no, not really. Not since Emma resigned. It's left to me to do everything. Not fair you working all these hours. We never get to see you. <laughs> you think I like it? Do you know, 
It's been a year since I went into business with Barry, and by now you'd think we'd start to reap the benefits, see a bit of the good life, but instead of that, I'm still being treated like some whitey est lucky. <sighs> it's about time some changes started being made around here. Well, maybe I should take advantage of Barry's absence, start running things my way. Do you know, if I were you, I'd go for it. I mean, if there's one thing that the last few weeks have taught me, is that life's far too precious just to sit back and watch it pass you by. I mean, we're so lucky. We've got our health. I mean, just imagine if things had turned against us. Don't. You know, if we lost Mum and Thomas last week, I don't think I'd have been able to go on. Me neither. Right. I think you have to look on the positive side. I mean, we've been through so much. Cancer, Alice, Susanna. But we've always managed to come out the other side. We've always survived. You know, from now on, I'm determined to make something of my life. Otherwise, I'm just going to end up regretting it in ten years' time. And that's what we should do. Working in the florist really made me realise how useless I've been feeling lately. I actually enjoyed it. You know, now Alice is in nursery. I mean, there's nothing to stop me taking on some work. Why? You mean try and pitch for some more accounts? I'm not even sure about that anymore. I'd like to make a fresh start. Think about all the things I'd like to do. All the things I thought I couldn't do. I want to do everything. Well, if you fancy being a waitress or a dishwasher tonight, I could do with a hand. If you have to go now. Yeah, I really must. It's, it's nearly ten to. Look, I'll be back before midnight. Mm -hmm. Anything happened yet? No. Are you sure we're doing it right? Well, they did say that we'd have to wait for a few minutes, didn't they? Uh, uh, all right, love. Uh, I'll be in now. All right. It was a close shave, wasn't it? Anything coming through yet? No, no. Hang on a minute. Well, come on, Ed. What does it say? Well, according to this, Ron, it's positive. Rosie's pregnant. I've uh, decided to do the decent thing. And what's that? I'm going to leave. Well, if that's what you've decided. Is that all you're going to say? Why? Do you want me to persuade you to stay? <laughs> right then, I'll uh, make a move first thing in the morning. on four without walls and Hunter Davis accuses Manchester United of selling their footballing soul and there's the story of how four lads from Andover made the big time as the Trogs and over on ITV next peak practice That's it, then. I've been on the phone to my old friend Ted down in Hove, and he said it's perfectly OK for me to stay with him till I sort myself out. That's very good of him. Yes. Well, it's, it's a long drive down there, so uh, I'd better be making a move. Right, well, I'll, um, I'll make a move, then. Drive carefully. Yes, I will, I will. Well, I'd better be off. Bye. Bye. 
now. There's an offer I can't refuse. All right, Rosie. Well, I've got to do something to attract the customers. I haven't had one single person here today. Yeah, I suppose people are still too frightened to come round here. Scared they might catch something. I've just seen them loading up that mobile clinic thing. Looks like they're taking it away. That might help, you know, when people see it's gone, like. Ah, still going to take a while before everything gets back to normal, Rose. Mm. How are Leo and Gemma getting on? Well, they went back to school today. Oh, well, doing good to get back into a routine. You know, Harley was actually looking forward to going back. Yeah, it's our Leo that worries me the most. He's been a different person since Gary died. Mm. I suppose it's going to take him a while. Gary was a bit of a surrogate big brother to him, wasn't he? Yeah, it's a funeral next week. Don't know how he's going to handle that. Yeah, such a waste of a young life. I know, it's not fair, is it? And what makes it worse is we still haven't had any satisfactory answers on how this virus ended up over here. Look, why don't you take Leo and Gemma to Rachel Jordash's party later? Bet they could do with a bit of cheering up. Yeah, somebody mentioned that. That's how I feel, you know. I'm saying to Eddie, I don't know how they can even think about throwing parties, you know, with the trial and everything coming up. They seem to be coping really well. If it was me, I think I'd just crack up. Well, it's not all doom and gloom over there, you know. They've had the good news at home. Uh, how do you mean? What good news? Oh, uh, li nothing. Listen, uh, I shouldn't have said anything. Just forget I even opened my mouth. Oh, go on, Mick. Spill the beans. I could do with hearing a bit of good news for I'm a sorry, change. I'm sorry, Rosie. I can't. All right, you can't just leave me with that. Do you promise not to say a word? I swear. You're going to find out anyway. They can't keep it a secret forever. Come on, I can't cope with all this suspense. Simba told me the other day, Mandy's pregnant. You're kidding me. Straight up and they're over the moon. But don't you tell a soul. I shouldn't have even told you. Mick, you can trust me. I won't breathe a word to anyone. Hey, at least that solved the worry about this mystery sample. It's even crossed my mind it might have been me. Thank God for that. <laughs> oh. Hey, I didn't know you got yourself a new job. Uh, just filling in for Mum. Oh, how long for? Oh, only a few days. All oh, right. Leave you to it then. See right. ya. All right, Ping. See you, Rosie. Yeah, Hi, Dad. How are you? Not too good, to be brutally frank. Well, what's wrong? Can we go inside? It's not Mum, is it? No, no, your mother's fine. Look, let's go inside. It's not appropriate to talk out here, please. What's happened? Well, it's all rather complicated, I'm afraid. I'm, uh, I'm going away for a while. But I don't understand. Mum's only just got better. What's gone wrong? I really don't want to go into it now. Let's just say it was something from the past. Oh, no. Not Mum's old friend again. No, no. Not at all. Anyway, I just wanted to come and say goodbye. You can't just walk in here out of the blue and tell me you're leaving. Where are you going? I'm going down to Hove to stay with my old friend, Ted. It's my only option at the moment. For how long? Till I sort myself out. You can't just go. You've got to stay here and sort out whatever your problems are. Patsy, if only it were that simple. Look, I, I really ought to make a move. Uh, I've got a long drive ahead and I need to sort out some business with Ron Dixon before I go. Now, listen, please, don't go upsetting yourself. I'll be in touch, all right? Bye for now. Should you be carrying those in your condition? Hey, what do you mean I'm as fit as a fiddle? Oh, yeah. I was just referring to your female condition, you know. <laughs> There's no way I'd be letting Bev traipse around with big heavy bags of shopping. I'm one of these new men. Oh, oh right. Uh, Glad to hear it. But I think I'm strong enough to carry a few bags. <laughs> you had me worried there for a minute. Thought I had the plague and no one had bothered to tell me. <laughs> nice one, mate. Sorry, Ed. I didn't mean to drop you, did I? Just assume that you'd have told her by now. Yeah, well, I haven't had the chance what we're working on, huh? And every time I do go to tell her, either one of the kids come in or Mo or the phone rings. Well, you're going to have to tell her sooner or later. Oh, she's just finding the right time. I, mean, I don't know how she's going to react on a kid at our age. No time like the present, Edward. Who else is in yours now? Nobody. So, what are you waiting for? Yeah, well, I suppose you're right. Wish me luck, eh? Nah, I'm sure you won't need it to be made up. <sighs> she's a woman, isn't she? They love all that. Yeah, well. There's only one way to find out. See ya. Ta-da. Oh, Ron. Hello, Bing. Can I have a word? Yeah, sure. What can I do you for? Uh, look, um, would you mind if we stepped inside for a minute? Sounds important. It, it is, really. So, what can I do for you, mate? Uh, well, to cut a very long story short, I'm going to be leaving Liverpool this afternoon for an indefinite period. 
Why? What's happened? I'd rather not discuss it at the moment, Ron, if you don't mind, but uh, there is just one thing. It would be a huge weight off my mind if I could leave the Residents Association in capable and reliable hands. You want me to take over? I don't want you to feel under, under any obligation. I know you're a busy man, and running the BRA is pretty time-consuming, but uh, you are the obvious choice. Well, it's a big honor, Bing, but no one could run the BRA as well as you do. It's very kind of you, Ron. I wish I could stay and carry on, but circumstances beyond my control. You all right, Ed? Yeah, yeah. Uh, why should I be? No. Just... You haven't said a word to me since I got back from the shops. Uh, well, uh, the thing is, look, what are you doing? Well, I forgot my history homework, didn't I? And I'm getting detention if it's not answered in on time. Oh, we can't have that, can we? Wouldn't want you missing Rachel's party now. See you later. Hey, guess who's pregnant? Who? Mandy Jordash. Oh, is she? Yeah, Mick Johnson told me. <gasps> Poor cow. Can't say I envy her. There's no way I'd fancy being up to my elbows in dirty nappies at my age. No, no, Ted, really. There's no need to apologise. I totally understand. No, 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 honestly, it's no problem. I can easily find somewhere else to stay. Yes, yes, of course. Right. All right. I'll be in touch. Bye, then. Sorry that took so long. Been a bit of a hitch, I'm afraid. I gathered that. It seems that Marjorie, Ted's wife, has put her foot down. She doesn't want to be seen to be taking sides between Jean and myself. I see. So, what are you going to do? Well, I'm a bit stuck, actually. There isn't anyone else I can ask at such short notice. I suppose I'll have to see about finding myself a hotel for the night. You don't want to be staying in some hotel, Bing. That's my only option, I'm afraid. Burnt all my other bridges. Yeah, well, look, why don't you stay here for the night, just till you sort yourself out? Oh, I couldn't impose on you like that. You wouldn't be imposing. Well, if you insist, that'd be marvellous. It's jolly decent of you, right? Well, it does seem a bit stupid, you paying out for hotels when we've got a spare room upstairs, doesn't it? Are you sure Beverly won't mind? No, no, of course not. Why should she? I see what goes on around here. Mum, what's going on? Nothing's going on. I'm just getting myself ready for a party, that's all. Party? What party? Rachel Jordasher's. You and Max were invited. You're supposed to be relaxing, not going to parties. I'm bored stiff with relaxing. I just want to get back in the land of the living. Anyway, how can you even think of going to a party when I've just had Dad in the shop telling me he's moving to home? So I believe. So what's going on? Oh, Patricia, ask your father. I haven't got the energy to go into it all. I asked him. He wouldn't tell me anything. Look, I was quite looking forward to going to this party. I do not wish to depress myself by thinking about him. Uh, he is my father. I do think I've got a right to know. Don't get upset. You have more important things to think about. And now I am going to finish getting ready. Hey, hurry up, lad. We're up. Yeah, oh, my God! What have you done to your hair? Bloody hell, lad. You look like the last of them all weekend. Jeez. Get off. I've only had it tied up. Anyway, I think it looks dead smart. Well, what have you done to the sides? Did you know he was getting this done? Well, I only sent him off with his usual haircut. Oh, you're going to make a right show of us, you, aren't you? Oh. Come, Ed, let's get to this party. <laughs> oh. There they go. There they are. But you shouldn't have done, you know. You can't afford to be buying champagne. Ah, oh, it's a special occasion, isn't it? There you go. Whoops. Oh, right. Thanks. All right, only one glass for you. Can't let the hostess get drunk, can we? <laughs> right. Well, here's to Rachel. To Rachel. To Rachel. Mm. Looks like your first guests have arrived. I'll get it. Mm -hmm. Ah, she seems made up, doesn't she? Yeah. Let's just hope we've turned the corner with her. Mm. Are you ready? Happy oh. All the best. Hey, yeah. All the best. Hey, hi. Hey. Oh, doesn't my room look amazing? Yeah, it looks great. Hey, I'm oh. surprised never had a heart attack blown all this lot yeah. of. <laughs> there you go, Mandy. I've got some uh, lagers, some cokes, and all that. Oh, yeah, I've got this. Yeah, I've got this. Last week. Oh, thanks yeah. a lot. And this is from me and Eddie. Thanks. Not much. <laughs> 
Come on, can you see what else I've got? Yeah, cheers. What do you want to drink, Eddie? Uh, I'll have a lager, please, man. Okay. Yeah, I'll give you the lager, man. Okay. Do you want some lovely? Oh, nice. Thank you, to the bag, my dears. Oh, you've done a lovely spread there. Oh, thanks. Not that I fancy eating anything myself, eh? I'm a bit queasy. Ah, oh, well, it'd be like that, can't it? You know, in the first few months. Sorry? Oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry. I promised I wouldn't say it. I can't hold my own water sometimes. I know about your little secrets. What little secret? You know, about your spectrum number three. Oh. When's it due? October. Who told you? Don't worry, I won't crack on to anyone. It's just I couldn't resist saying how made up we are for you. Oh, sorry. Oh, give us a can of lager. I don't think I can drink any more of that bubbly stuff. Who have you been telling? Yeah. Rosie knows about me being pregnant. How? Well, I certainly haven't told anyone. Well, I couldn't contain myself any longer. I told me. But it's all right. He won't say anything to anybody. He's a mate. Well, it looks like the whole world knows now. You better tell Rachel. It'd be awful if she found out from someone else. And when are you going to tell her? We better tell her as soon as possible. Before some other blabbermouth creates World War Three. Hi. Oh, something smells nice. Mm. I'm making aubergine bake. Oh, that's good. Now I brought this as well. So uh, why don't we eat, drink? I'll wash up. And then, have an early night. How does that sound? Or, alternatively, mm -hmm. we could go to a party. What party? Rachel Jordash's 16th. <laughs> You're serious? I didn't think you wanted to go. No, absolutely not. <laughs> nice thing I want to do on my night off is go to a party over there. I mean, one crossword and uh, could end up underneath the patio. Ow. That's below the belt. Hurt. You deserved it. Well, after yesterday's residence meeting, I, I don't think I could face another night socialising with the neighbours. No, I must admit, I should show my face, but I just haven't got the energy. Never realised that working in a florist could be so tiring. Oh, yeah. How did that go today? Oh, everything was going fine, till Dad came in and told me that he was leaving Mum and moving to Hove. Joking. Would I joke about a thing like that? Well, hang on, hang on. What, what happened? I haven't got a clue. Dad wouldn't tell me. And when I went over to see Mum, she was far more interested in getting herself ready for the Jordash's party. Oh, it's probably another of those silly little tiffs. I think so. Yes. I mean, it can't be that serious, can it? She's going out to this party. Uh, David couldn't make it, so I brought my toy boy instead. Oh, <laughs> I do. Hello, Rosie. Where is David? Um, other plans, I'm afraid. Oh. Uh, can I like a mix? Oh, nice one, sir. And what about you, Jean? Lucas Aid? Oh, I have a glass of white wine if you have one, please. Yeah, I think we can manage that, yeah. Hi, yeah. Hi, yeah. Is Chantel Kelly a Suzanne? Oh, I'd like to say that. We'll say to do you. We'll go upstairs in a minute. It's for the little people in there. See, that's all that I'm meant to tell. There's only three of them. Where are the rest being invited? Come on in, girls. Don't be standing there all night. Sit down, Jean. Take the weight off your feet. I'm fine, honestly. Hey, where are the kids, Mick? Um, I said they could go upstairs and play with my new tapes. Oh, okay. That'd be the last we see of them, then. <laughs> Mick was saying the kids are taking Gary's death really bad. Yeah, especially on him. Sad that wasn't him, I and mean, he was a nice kid, that Gary. Such a waste, eh? Yeah, I can't say I'm looking forward to next week. You know, the funeral. <laughs> Excuse me. I think I'll catch the loop. Anybody know when Audrey and George's funerals are? Next week, I think. Oh, well, we'll have to source out this collection for the flowers from the residence. The same as he said, it was that George fellow who brought the bug in, don't he? Yeah, that's like Max said last night, though. I mean, he could be just using him as a scapegoat. Oh, he's caused nothing but trouble, that fella. You know, if he wasn't already dead, I could bloody well murder him. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... It's all right. Makes you wonder, though, how he could stop something like that ever happening again. Scary, isn't it? To think one person could have something like that and travel halfway across the world and then cause so much devastation. Where about his Gary's funeral, mate? Yeah, St. Jesus. Hey, come on, eh? It's supposed to be a party. We're all standing around talking about funerals and death. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Rich. This is your birthday, doing. I'm getting all morbid here. Hey, come on, we haven't cut the cake yet. I'll go and get it. 
Right now, from now on, we're all going to enjoy ourselves. Morbid conversations are banned. You can tell she's a traffic warden, can you? Yeah. Used to bossing everyone around. Me, you. <laughs> oh, excuse me, G. Yeah. Get them all in one now. Go on, don't forget to make the list, Rach. Right, who's your piece of cake then? Hmm? Hang on, hang on. Whoa, 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 before you start stuffing your faces with cake, I'd just like to say something. Um, oh, my God, he's not going to make a speech, is he? And, um, well, I'd like to make a toast to Rachel and to a successful and happy year. To Rachel. 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 I'd um, I'd like to thank you all for coming. It's been a difficult year for us, as you know, and um, I'd like you all to know that we've really appreciated your support, and we know exactly who our friends are. That's all I want to say, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was thinking today, someone with a bit more imagination got their hands on that florist. I'm sure it could be a gold mine. How? Oh. I'll get in some more interesting stock rather than all the usual stuff. Garden furniture, that kind of thing. You know, something a bit classy. At the moment, you're lucky if you can get a bunch of daffs and a bottle of plant food in there. It sounds like you've been giving it quite a lot of thought. Oh, it just seems such a waste. I'm convinced if it was managed in the right way, it could be a big success. Well, I suppose if we were more the Ron Dixon, Barry Grant breed, we'd be putting our ideas straight into practice. They seem to achieve everything they set out to do. Why don't we, then? All right. Take over the florist. Well, why should we sit back and watch the Ron Dixons and Barry Grants of this world become millionaires? Yeah, but, I mean, a tiny little florist in the middle of nowhere. How are they going to solve our problems, is it? Well, you've got to start somewhere. I mean, look at Anita Roddick. She started off with one tiny shop, and now there's a body shop in practically every city in the world. Mm, true. This could be the beginning of the rest of our lives. Anyway, where do you want to be in five years' time? I know I certainly don't want to be here. I want to be living in a big Victorian house with at least six bedrooms. And I want to be my own boss. And I want to have enough money in the bank so that Thomas and Alice never need want for anything. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Well, we're not going to get it, are we, by sitting on our backsides, being content with what we've got? If we want to make a success of ourselves, we've got to do something about it now. Well, we'll have to cancel our early night then, won't we? Why? Yeah. Well, it looks like we're going to have to be up till the early hours of the morning, finding out whether we can afford to take on another business venture. Do you mean it? Here's to a prosperous, successful future. You know, it's about time we got what we deserved. No more worrying about tomorrow. From now on, we live for today. Oh, I the floor to open up and it before when I said about Major and George. In your big mouth, eh? You know, it's weird to think he was just lying out there all this time, isn't it? Just yards from where we're standing now. Rosie, you're the one who said that morbid talk was banned tonight, remember? You can't help it, though, can you? To think all this time that he's walking around with that on my mind. Mm. I mean, how can you just carry on and act as though nothing ever happened? Yeah, I mean, I always knew she was a bit of a nervous wreck, but I just assumed she was on tablets or something. Yeah. Everyone enjoying themselves? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, thanks to you, mm. Everyone's a bit more relaxed now, aren't they? Yeah, it's a good atmosphere. Looks like I've been snubbed by the Dixons and the Farnans, though. Well, it's there, Loss. You've missed out on the party, haven't you? Should we tell Rachel about the baby now? Do you think that's a good idea? Well, why not? We're going to have to tell her sooner or later, aren't we? Tell you what. I'll fill these up again. Just a bit of Dutch courage. Thanks for coming. Cheers. See ya. It's a crap party, isn't it? It's all right. You don't have to lie, Lee. I think we're the only ones here under 40, apart from Liam and Jenna. Was it supposed to be my party and then lot have taken over? Oh, it's not that bad. I'm just going to the toilet. Are you enjoying yourself, love? Yeah. Um, Rachel, someone I want to word with you. What about? 
Well, we've got some news for you. What? Well, it's um, we're passing by now. Yeah. Just <laughs> tell her. You're going to have a new little baby brother or sister. What? I'm having a baby. To him? Yep. To who else? Oh, I don't believe you. Right, um, thanks for coming, everybody, but the party's over now. Um, come on, Rachel, there's no need for that. No need! No need, you stupid, stupid cow! Rachel! I don't believe you! Everybody so stupid! Rachel! Get off it! Don't you ever lay a finger like that on your mother again! Why? Don't you approve of violence? Well, tell her then and tell Beth, because they're the ones who murdered my dad. And we all know why now, don't we? So she could run off with her fancy man. I hope they give you and Beth life. Get off. Uh, just get off him. Thanks for the food and it. Right. Oh, everything's all right. Leo, Gemma, we're going now. Well, I'm about to square one with her. What are we going to do? I think we've done all we can. Yeah, look. If there's anything I can do to help, just ask. Thanks, Jim, but I don't know what we can do. I just can't believe the way she flew at you like that. Look, perhaps if she came over and stayed at my house for tonight, if you think that would help, just until things calm down. Right, I'm going. I never want to see this house again. Rachel, what's the matter with you? We went out of our way to make things nice for you tonight. Well, you needn't have bothered. It's been crap. Look, Rachel, how would you like to come and spend the night at my house? I don't care where I stay as long as it isn't here. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on her. She's gone from bad to worse. Oh, she hates me. She really hates me. What am I going to do about her? She's just wet. That's weird. What is? Well, I've just been trying to ring Dad at his friend's in Hove. He's not there. Oh, there you are. I told you it was just a tiff. He's probably back next door now, behaving like nothing ever happened. I hope so. Well, <laughs> don't worry about it. Your parents are old enough to take care of themselves. Anyway, we've got better things to be getting on with. Do you think I should go around there? No, just leave it. We've got to check out the florist, make our plans to transform it. Mustn't waste any time if we want to get rich. Yeah, well, don't get too carried away. It's still Ron Dixon's shop, remember? Well, I think you might be wrong there, actually. It was Dee Dee's shop, but now she's abandoned ship. I think Barry will be happy to renegotiate the lease. Right, well, I'll go and get Alice ready for nursery. It's Rachel. Well, I hope she's come to apologise. Hello, love. I've come to get the rest of my things. Rachel? What? We've got to talk. What's there to talk about? I think you're being really selfish. I'm being really selfish? Your mum's got a lot to cope with, you know. Why should I care about her? She murders my dad, moves a fancy man in, and then expects me to be made up because she's having his baby. You know, it wasn't like that. And besides, this baby wasn't something we planned. Well, in that case, why don't you just get rid of it? Hey, 
This is a baby we're talking about. I couldn't care less what you do. I'm going to go and pack the rest of my stuff, and then I'm going to go and get myself a flat. Oh, Rachel, don't be so stupid. You can't just go off and get a flat like that. It takes months, sometimes years. Yeah, well, they'll have to give me something when I tell them I'm homeless. Rachel, there's no need for you to put yourself through this. I know we can't change anything that's happened, but you've got to think about the future. What about school? What's school got to do with anything? I'm 16 now. I don't have to go anymore. I've left. You can't just leave school like that. Yeah, well, I already have. I've left school and now I'm leaving home. Oh, all right, Max. Hello, Pat. What are you doing? Well, I've managed to find a buyer for most of this stuff now, so I'm just measuring up. For what? Ah, uh, wouldn't you like to know? Well, a spot of refurbishment? No, it's a bit more drastic than that, love. Actually, I'm thinking about knocking through to the next door. I've been meaning to do it for years. Well, I think you might have a few problems there. Oh, why? Well, there's the planning permission for a start, and I'm pretty certain you wouldn't get the go-ahead for something as drastic as this. Rubbish. Not only that, but uh, Patricia and I have been making our own plans, and, well... We've decided that uh, we're going to take over the place. Do you mean? You can't do that. I pay rent on this shop. Yes, but the lease is in Dee Dee's name and, um, well, she's not here anymore. I'll see Barry Grant about this. He's away on business at the moment. Well, I'll see him when he gets back then. I'm afraid you're wasting your time. Barry put me in charge of the shops in his absence and any decision making regarding the whole development is entirely up to me. I wouldn't look so smug about this if I were you. I'd be taking proper advice on this. You'll get this place over my dead body. Uh, fingers crossed. Oh, hello, come in. I've just come to pick up the rest of my stuff, if that's all right. Of course. How did you get on with your flat hunting? Oh, not very well. I think they might be able to fit me into a hostel. A hostel? Well, I haven't got much choice, have I? I am homeless. Do you know where this hostel is? No, and it's not even definite yet. I've got to go back to the housing place at two. Is there no way you consider going back home? It's not my home, it's Simbad's. And when will Beth go to prison? He won't want me there anyway. I'm sure that's not true. Anyway, we don't know that anyone's going to prison yet. Yeah, well, whatever happens, I've decided from now on I'm on my own. Thanks for letting me stay last night. Don't mention it. Right, well, I'd better get back to the housing then. Look, there's no need to go. I'm not going home. I'm not asking you to go back home. Look, you'd be more than welcome to stay here just for a few weeks until you get yourself sorted out. Surely it's got to be better than staying with a lot of strangers in a hostel. That's really nice of you. But what about Mr Crosby? Wouldn't he mind? He's uh, staying with a friend. He could be there for some time. So it'll be just you and I. I know there's a bit of an age gap. I'm sure we could enjoy being flatmates. Well, I suppose I could just for a few weeks. But if I can get myself a job, I should be able to get a flat, no problem. It does seem to make much more sense. Are you sure you don't mind? I wouldn't have asked otherwise. Oh, thanks a lot, Mrs Crosby. I really appreciate it. And you can drop all this Mrs Crosby nonsense. Just call me Jean. Look, you go and unpack your things again. I'll put the kettle on. We'll have a nice cup of tea and you can help me decide who's going to win the Grand National tomorrow. Right, try and ring Barry now. Try and get this matter sorted out as quickly as possible. And then it's full speed ahead. I've got a really good feeling about this. It's definitely going to be our year. That's if Barry agrees. Dad? Oh, hello, Patsy. Where have you been? I have been worried sick. I, I stayed with Ron and Bev last night. Yeah, but I thought you were going to Hove. Uh, yes, yes, there have been a few complications, a change of plan. I'm uh, off to Cambridge to stay with Gilbert. You What's know, going on? I'll uh, leave you two to talk. Look, Patsy, this is neither the time nor place. Tough, because you are going nowhere until you've told me the whole story. Come on. She's never away from this place, eh? Sometimes I think we'll never get a minute to ourselves. Why? You want me all to yourself, do you? Well, actually, love, I have been wanting to have a word with you. Oh, I. What about? Well, um, well it's a bit difficult, really. Um, we never get a minute to ourselves anymore, do we? No. Oh, I don't believe this. Oh, yeah. Do you want to eat? I'm, uh, I'm doing cauliflower cheese for your dinner, so you'll have to wait. Very exotic. <laughs> 
What were you going to say, love? Oh, it's, uh, it's all right, love. They can wait. Well, then. This is incredibly difficult for me, Patricia. Well, it's pretty difficult for me. I find out my parents are split up and no one will offer me an explanation. Please don't force me to tell you. I've already lost your mother. I don't want to lose you, too. Oh, surely it can't be that bad. I feel so ashamed of what I've done. I could... I can hardly bear to tell you. Well, whatever it is, Dad, it's not going to be resolved by you bottling it all up. I don't think things can be resolved anymore. They've gone too far. I've... I've been unfaithful. You've had an affair? No, 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 no. It wasn't an affair. It was... It was just a one-off. I was really low at the time, and this other person was very really keen to take advantage of my low self-esteem, and I... I'm afraid I, I just didn't have the strength to walk away from it. Who was it? Audrey. Audrey? So now you see why I have to go away. Oh, Dad, when will you ever learn? Trisha, I have learned the hard way, unfortunately. I've lost your mother, I've lost my home, my future, my security, I've lost it all. Well, don't expect any sympathy from me, because I've been through it. I know what it feels like. I know what Mum will be going through right now. How could you do it? How could you let her down like this? What do you want me to say? Do you think I'm proud of my actions? Anyway, at least you know the truth. I thought I'd walked into the wrong house there. Uh, we were just sorting a few things out, sorry. Won't be long. So, do you want me to make myself scarce? Thank you, we'd appreciate that. Right, I'll go and tidy the bedroom then. I'm sorry, Patsy. I've let you all down. Oh, Dad, my illusions about you were shattered a long time ago. I'm not Daddy's little girl anymore. I know what you are. You're just a man, and you know better or worse than any of the rest of them. I mean, this isn't even the first time you put Mum through all this. Can you imagine how she must be feeling? Yes. I know how much pain I must have caused her. And that's why I've got to leave. She's better off without me. But believe me, Patricia, this is breaking my heart. I adore your mother. I always have. When I thought that I was going to lose her last week, I... I just couldn't handle it. I don't think I could have gone on living if she... I love her. I always will. I'm nothing without her. She's the only person in the world for me. Then how could you do this to her? Because I'm weak. Don't you think you should be telling Mum all this, not me? There's no point. The damage has already been done. Well, maybe. But there's no harm, surely, in telling her how sorry you are, how bad you feel about it. I mean, I'm not saying she'll ever forgive you, but you've been together for well, 40 years. There's no point in throwing it all away just because of some pathetic little affair which meant nothing anyway. Well, you haven't got any choice, because I'm hanging on to these until you at least make the effort to clear the air. Hello, Jean. Now, uh, come in. No, no, I won't stay. I just popped across to let you know that Rachel's agreed to stay with me at the bungalow for a while. Oh, thank God for that. I'm sure she'll be back here when she's had a chance to clear her head. God knows what everybody must be saying. Her being passed around from pillar to post. I mean, first she's next door and now she's over there with you. Well, I wouldn't let that worry you. The important thing is that she's safe and at least we can keep an eye on her. Well, thanks, Jean. Not at all. If there's any more I can do, you know where to find me. Well, thank God you got that sorted out. I know this sounds terrible, but there's a big part of me feels relieved she's not here. She has been a bit of a handful lately. Yeah, well, whose fault's that? 
Is it any wonder she's gone off the rails with everything that's happened? Well, uh, she'll be alright. You'll see. Oh, well, I hope so. Oh, yeah. Oh, hello, Bing. Didn't expect to find you here. No, there's been another hitch, I'm afraid. Patricia's robbed his car keys, so he's stuck. Why'd she do that? She's determined that I try and sort things out with Jean. Oh, well, maybe it's not such a bad idea, eh, mate? It's not much point. We're beyond talking, I'm afraid. So what are you going to do? I don't really know. I'm more or less marooned. Uh, don't suppose there's any chance of my spending another night here, is there? I, I wouldn't ask any. I am rather desperate. Well, um... Yeah. <laughs> Can't see why not. Tell you what, I'll put the kettle on, eh? <laughs> Ron, what are you playing at? What was I supposed to say? You should have told him to do one. Shh, yeah. I couldn't care less. I want my house back to myself. I mean, we've only just got rid of Sarah and Rebecca, and now we've got Roger the Lodger. Yeah, well, it should only be for one night. You said that yesterday. Look, he'll be gone by tomorrow. No, Ron, he'll be gone by tonight, because I am sick of having my house used as a hostel for the homeless. Well, what can I tell him? I couldn't care less. You're the one with all the answers. I've just had a long conversation with Dad. And how is he? Enjoying bachelor life in Hove? He didn't go to Hove. He's been staying with Ron and Bev. <laughs> he didn't get very far, did he? You two are going to have to talk. He's in a real state. Been spinning you one of his little sob stories, has he? No, in fact, he told me the truth. I know all about Audrey. I'm really sorry, Mum. Charming, isn't it? I befriended that woman against my better judgment. I knew she was after your father, then everybody did. She was hardly the most subtle of women, was she? But I didn't look upon it as a threat. I mean, I even invited her to come and stay with us. And all because I wrongly assumed I could trust him. Oh, I should have known better. He's hurt me, Patricia, because he's abused that trust and I'll never be able to forgive him. I know, Mum. Don't forget I went through it myself. And I've never forgiven Max for going back to Suzanne. I've just learned to live with it. And I don't blame you at all for throwing Dad out. I'd have done exactly the same myself. But I didn't throw him out. It was his decision to leave. But I thought... Patricia, your father chose to leave because once having made his confession, he couldn't bear to look me in the face, so he simply packed his bags and fled. I just assumed you'd asked him to go. Oh, he just wants to turn himself into the victim. I wasn't going to ask him to leave, no matter how much this whole Audrey business hurts. It can't cancel out what we've already had. So what's he playing at? Well, simple. He couldn't handle the fact I wasn't going to punish him, so he's going to punish himself. I'll get him. Tom. Oh, hello, and uh, what can I do for you? Well, it's a bit awkward, really, Jean. Um... I don't know whether you know or not, but we've got your Dave staying with us at the moment. That's very hospitable of you. Well, we couldn't see him out on the streets, could we? He wasn't out on the streets. No, well, um... Look, love, I know it's none of my business, but couldn't you come and talk to him at least? He does seem really upset. I am sick and tired of people feeling sorry for him. I've done nothing. He's the one in the wrong. And if you must know, he was not thrown out. He walked out. And he walked out because he hadn't got the guts to admit that he has been a perfect swine to me. Yeah, well, I don't want to get involved, really, you know. I mean, to be honest with you, I only came round because Bev's been having a bit of a go at me. She wants the house back to herself, you know. Right, well, I'll uh, leave you to get on with it, then. Well, I bet he wasn't expecting that. <laughs> well, it riles me to think of everybody rallying round to help your blessed father out. Look, Mum, I know that Dad is behaving very childishly and he's just, he's just running away from everything, but surely that doesn't mean you have to stoop down to his level. Why don't you just go over there, grab the bull by the horns? I'd like to grab him by somewhere a lot more painful. <laughs> <laughs> Mum, 
Do us a favour, kid. Go on the coke room for us, will you? Well, I can't say you want me on the bar. Well, I'm telling you the one you're on the coke room. But who's going to wake the idea? She'll so be in the middle, won't she? Oh, I hate doing the cloak room. It's dead boring. Oh, is it now? Well, you're not paid to enjoy yourself, are you? Where are you going, Mum? Jimmy wants me on the cloak room. I told you I want you on the bar tonight. I know what told him, but he wouldn't listen. Just get back behind the bar, take no notice of it. Oi! Are you deaf or something? Our Carl's told me to stay here. Oh, what's he now? Yeah, he has. Oh, right, yeah. Didn't see you there. Obviously. Yeah, I was just saying to Mo, I want her on the cloakroom tonight. Sorry, Jim, I want Mo be on the bar tonight. But we need someone on the cloakroom. Let me worry about that. Hey, you. You've only been here five minutes. Who do you think you're there? Peter Stringfellow. Could someone please make a decision? Do you want me on the cloakroom or the bar? bar. Cloakroom. Oh, I'm flipping sick of this. I'm getting off. Fill me up once you finally manage to make a decision between the pair of you. Hang on, hang on, hang on, Muggins. Where do you think you're going? You've been paid for tonight. That's hard luck, isn't it? Because I'm not staying around here to play piggy in the middle between you two. You better decide who's running this place. Otherwise, you could find yourselves with a strike on your hands. What will Barry make of that? Now look what you've done. Are you watching this? Hey? No, no, not particularly thing. How about you, Emma? I got it. It's just that the news is about to start on the other channel, and uh, I do rather like to keep abreast of what's going on in the world. Yeah, yeah you surely. Remote's about to side you, there. Oh, right, thanks. Oh, for the hi fi, not the telly. Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry, I'm not really up to date with all this technical gadgetry. Oh, that's for the satellite, this is the telly one. Ah, right, thank you. <sighs> they confuse me and all things. <laughs> Hi, Jean. Don't come in. Thank you. I'll pop the cat on. Oh, yeah, right. I'll give it a hand. Hello. Hello. This is a bit of a surprise. I didn't expect to see you. Well, it was obvious you weren't going to see me. So, um, what can I do for you? Oh, just get your things and come home. What? Oh, don't pretend you didn't hear me. Why? After everything I've done? You just don't understand, do you? But then why should you? You couldn't accept my friendship with Jane, and that was over 40 years ago. And that, I think, is where our problems began. Because you couldn't come to terms with my past. If you'd made more of an effort to be understanding then, Who's Jane? I didn't think we'd be where what we she's are got to today. do with it. flirted with death last week, David. I stared it straight in the face. And it helped me put things into perspective. I now know what is important and what isn't. Yes, of course it hurts me to think of you with Audrey. But it's not the sex. It's the deceit. That after all these years, you still think you can get away with lying to me. And then to run away like this because you can't face the music. Don't you think I'm worth fighting for? I, I didn't think there was any point. No point. We have been together for over 40 years and you don't have the decency to even discuss it with me. What did you expect me to do? I expected you to beg for my forgiveness. I wanted you to tell me how much you loved me. And that you'd been a fool and it was all a big mistake and it would never happen again and that you were sorry. But you didn't. You just ran away. Jean, I did want to say all those things. But you didn't and now it's too late. So, where do we go from here? Well, first, we must promise to be absolutely honest with each other. No more lies, no more deceit, and no more running away. 
I promise. You had better mean it, David, because I am not coming running after you again next time. It's me that'll be doing the running. Gee. No. It's gone all quiet now. Eddie must be kissing and making up. Mm, makes me sick to think of wrinkly snogging. Oh, this makes a nice change, doesn't it? Me and you having a nice inn on our own. Mm. It's about time we had the place to ourselves. What time did our lease say be back here? Oh, I told him to be no later than ten. Um, well, actually, love, I'm glad we've got this time to ourselves, because... <laughs> Looks like you spoke a bit too soon. I'll get it. Oh, there's been murder at work. Talk about the blind leading the blind. Hey, what are you doing? Shift out me back. You're not coming in, Mum. You what? Don't take it personally. I just need some time alone with my wife. Goodbye. Hey, what's going on, Lee? What are you playing at? One. I'll tell you what's come over me. I've been trying to talk to you all bloody week, but I haven't had the chance. Well, talk to me about what? <laughs> Shit, come on. You're pregnant. What? You're pregnant. How do you know? It's a long story. I did a test on your sample the other day. It was positive. Oh, you're joking. You're not. Oh, my God, I don't believe this. You might as well let me in, because I'm not going till I get a cup of tea. You'll have a long wait, then. Oh, my God, Dad. I'm pregnant. The Jimmy Corkill story is on the shelves in most bookshops at £4.99. Sign of morning sickness, yeah. No. Got all that to look forward to, eh? I'm with stinking nappies, sleepless nights. Just like the old days. Except there's a bit more to think about now, isn't there? Well, like. What to tell the kids? No, there's a few things we need to talk about first. Well, because they're going to have to know sooner or later. Yeah, I know that, but. But, um. In the meantime, how about making your lovely pregnant wife a nice cup of tea? Bev, we just got to face it, love. All these big plans expanding into next door, Ron's mini-mart. It's all just a pipe dream. Why? Just because some chinless wonder like Maxi Fartor says so. Who also happens to be the landlord's partner. Well, I reckon we ignore him and we knock through to that shop. Oh, yeah. And what happens when Al Capone gets back off his holidays? He's going to love me vandalising his precious shops, isn't he? Well, there's already one lying empty, isn't there? I mean, you're the only one round here making any money. Eh, uh, was. You deserve more respect. <laughs> Some hope. It should be you running that florist. You know what, it's a crying shame we can't get our hands on that place. Had I made a fortune on reeds this week, what with the funerals from that plague and that? See? There you go again. It's your business mind. It's checking over like some mad time bomb. Never stops, my love, never stops. Which is why you wipe the floor with Max and Pat. Which is why, when Barry Grant shows his gob here, you're gonna get that shop off him. But it's already sorted, remember? But is it? I mean, where's the proof? Max Barnum could be making it up as he goes along, for all we know. 
Do you reckon? I wouldn't put it past him. Anyway, better get over there, start me cleaning. If we could afford it, you know, I'd tell them to just where to stick their lousy job. What? And miss out on my chance to sniff around and find out what's really going on. Get with it, love. I'll see you later. Imagine if it's a little girl. I mean, well, I'm not bothered either way, but daughter would be nice. Don't you think you're getting a bit ahead of yourself, love? What do you mean? Well, we've got to be realistic about this, haven't we? Yeah. And let's face it, you're hardly a spring chicken in the mother of sticks. <laughs> Thanks very much. Now, I'm sorry, I just... Hey, you're trying to say I'm past her? No. Because my body doesn't seem to think so. I know you're not past it, love, but... Well... Well, I am allowed to worry about my own wife, aren't I? Even if she's a decrepit old bag? <sighs> yeah. Fair enough. I mean, I'm not a complete caveman. I do know dropping the sprog's a bit dodgy when you... hit the big 4 -oh. So they say. So what do you reckon? Oh, it's not in two reckon, is there? Aren't you scared? Of course I'm scared. I've been tossing and turning half the night, weighing it all up. Cos I don't want you... putting your life on the line. Oh, it's a bit dramatic, isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry, I... Look, I know it's a bit iffy, but... but thousands of women every year have kids at my age. The deed's done, we just have to get on with it. Hang on, love. Now, before you make a beeline for the early learning centre, shouldn't we get you checked out first? Make sure it's safe to go ahead with this. Make sure it's safe? Yeah. Cos if there's any danger to your health, then... Then what? Then... Well, we'll have to talk about whether we're going to go ahead with it or not. I know you're not saying what I think you're saying. I just want to keep our options open. Oh, I'm sorry, Eddie, no way. <sighs> this could be my last chance. Look, I know there's risks involved, but I don't care. I'm having this baby. Oh, come on, Barry, where are you? It just keeps ringing out. Well, what are we going to do? Well, there's not a lot we can do until he gives us the OK. Oh, he'd better reappear soon before Ron Dixon rumbles that we're bluffing. Have faith. Yeah, I'm trying, but I really don't want to lose out on this one, especially not to our next-door neighbours. Trust me. Look, we need deep in Darius this time next week. Try him again, eh? Yeah. Okay. Just a second. Not bad, eh? Practically see your face in there. Very impressive. Ta. Right. So, um, how are the plans for the shop going, Pat? Fine. And Barry pleased, is he? Uh, yes, yes, he's all for it. Great. Oh, I made up for you. Oh, I thought Ron was. He was a bit miffed at first, but no one likes to think they've missed out, do they? No. Anyway, he's over it now. I suppose it's quite nice, really. Next door at the close, next door at the shops, and if Barry's happy, he knows best, doesn't he? Yeah. So everything's all right then, isn't it? <laughs> Two-faced sobs. For the third and last time of asking, could you drag yourselves out of your pits, please? Me and your dad have got some to tell you. <sighs> They're trying to raise the debt. What's that look for? What look? Don't you want them to know? Yeah, but... Well, you're jumping the gun. Please, Ed. Stick with us, eh? I am with you, love, but... Oh, I don't know. I mean, you hear all sorts, don't you, about... having kids at our age. I mean, what if they tell us it's... it's gonna be like the Farnham girl? It's still our baby. So you'd go ahead with having it then? Yeah. I, th I don't think I'd have any choice. <sighs> Morning, people. Hey. Morning. What's all the shouting about? Oh, uh, I just ruined a couple of dirty dreams. Oh, this had better be good. I need my beauty sleep, you know. You all right? Yeah, girls, get some of this down your necks. Mm, thanks. Oh, uh, no thanks. You're not still worrying about that letter, are you? 
I just wonder when they're going to stop. Mum, it's in the bin with the rest of them where it belongs. Just forget about it. Which one's getting worse than the last? Oh, come on, man. We can't let some dickhead with a poison pen, will you? See, I'll have some toast. All oh, right, thanks. So how's the revision going? Slowly. Well, you'll get there. Yeah, eventually. Rachel. Looks like things got a well trained, doesn't it? Seems to be settling in nicely. Oh, she'll come back, Mum. When? Well, when she's ready. Look, you sit down and put your feet up. Expectant mothers need rest. Yeah, and what about rejected mothers? <sighs> no, I wish you'd ease up on yourself. But you shouldn't drag yourself through the coals because of her. I can't help it. Jean and David aren't going to want a permanent lodger, so what happens then? What if she disappears down to London again? We'll have to make sure she doesn't. How? Well, we could stop treating her like a kid for a start. It's a bit late in the day for that, isn't it? I don't know. How about a bit of blackmail? Like what? Well, proven to her that we think she's grown up by sorting it out in their own little flat. Paid for by who? No one. I don't mean a real flat. I'm talking about the extension here. All it needs is a lick of paint and a portable telly, and she'll think she's in bed land. It's worth a try. Well, have you got any better ideas? Okay. It's me and your dad. We're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> you what? Joking, aren't you? Oh, what's so funny about that? Oh, I feel ashamed. You too. What? I didn't know you had it, didn't you? Well, you were wrong then, weren't you? So, what do you think? <laughs> Sounds a pounds. <laughs> Life really does begin at 40, eh? Lee? I don't know. Look, I know it's mad, but you'll get used to it. We all will. Uh, Any joy? No, not a peep. Right, take a letter, Miss Farnham. What? Pen and paper, go on. Dear Max. Dear Max. Dear Max. Uh, just a short note to confirm in writing my permission to proceed vis-a-vis -vis the takeover of the lease on the florist. Hang on, hang on. Takeover the lease. On the florists. On the florist. Good luck with it, partner. <laughs> See you when I get back. Barry Grant. See you when I get back. Now sign it. Very good. Hmm. Well, no, I still don't get it, though. Paper? Thank you. Hey, Preston. Hot off the first lane of the information superhighway. Our fax from Florida. Brilliant. I'll just run another copy off for good old Ron. You've got the whole deal stitched up. Right, I'll just get this stuck in the machine and then I'll be finished, okay? Yeah, anything you say. Huh. Yeah, love, I'll do that. Yeah, I'm all right. No, you have a blog. Oh, I've only just got up. Sorry. Thank you. Rosie. What? I don't want to harp on about this, like, but... But what? I just want to ask you one thing. Have you forgotten what you were like when you had Ali? What's that got to do with the price of fish? Cos I haven't. So? It nearly killed you. Don't exaggerate. I'm not, and you know it. OK. It wasn't the easiest pregnancy in the world. So, what if it's the same this time round? It won't be. Says who? Look, just please leave it. Better answer the door. Are you deaf? All right. What? Just after your lad. He's all yours. How's tricks? All right. Sound? Didn't know you cared. A few things you don't know about me, kid. Such as? Nothing. Listen, I need a meat. A meat? What do you think this is? West Side Story. Look, well, can you spare us half an hour? What for? To talk. What about? Look, kid, do yourself a favour, eh? 
Get yourself dressed and get your carcass over to Barry's house. RSVP. All right? It's very kind of you to do the washing up for me. My pleasure. I don't want you to feel you have to do chores. I don't mind. I like helping. Right. All set for our weekly descent into the hell of the hypermarket. Do you mind making it a solo shopping expedition? No, no, not at all. I thought I'd like to spend some time with our guests. Yes, yes, of course. Anything you say, my dear. Well, have fun, you two. See ya. Oh, and um, uh, could you get these while you're out? Just a few essentials for Rachel. Right. Oh, no. Do I have to? Is this really necessary? Yes, she hasn't got a penny to her name, and we're supposed to be looking after her. Yes, but pushing a trolley around with these things stuck on top of the cornflakes, it's a bit... I'm afraid Mother Nature knows no shame. Bye. Nearly <laughs> finished. Well, now we're on our own, we can have a nice cup of tea and a chat. Would it be okay if I did a bit of washing first? Of course. I need to rinse my black skirt through. Gary's getting buried tomorrow. So is our friend Mrs. Mammons. Me and Leah go in. Oh, it must be so sad to lose a close friend, especially at your age. I'm used to it. What am my dad and everything? Oh, you poor child. I don't know. Sometimes I wish I'd died instead of Gary. Oh, don't say that. Why not? He had more to live for than I have. Surely not. He used to have people who loved him. So do you. Who? The only person who really loves me is dead. What about your mother and Beth? Beth hates me and Mum will. She killed my dad. What sort of love's that? Look, Rachel, whatever you may be feeling now, believe me, I know your mother loves you. All she's bothered about is Sinbad and a new baby. That is simply not true. Anyway, even if she does care, she'll be in jail soon. What am I going to do then? We don't know that she's going to prison. Well, Sinbad won't want me and have the baby to look after. Look, Rachel, whatever happens, I want you to know they'll always be a place here for you. Honest. For as long as you want. Thanks. Oh. You can't shut me out like this. I've got a right to my opinion, love. It's my child, too. Yeah. Sounds like you've already decided you want to get rid of her. No way! Haven't you listened to a word I've said? I haven't much choice. Please, love. Get me out, eh? You've already made yourself perfectly clear. No, it, it, it just keeps coming out wrong, that's all. I do want this baby, but not if it means losing me wife. If I've got to choose between you and a kid that isn't even born yet, there's no contest. Where's all this coming from, eh? I am perfectly healthy. I know that, but if, if something was up, I just want you to promise me that you wouldn't put yourself at risk. I can't do that. Rosie, I married you, not the kids. They're here because we love each other. I mean, I love the bones of them all, but you're my number one priority. Yeah. And when you married me, we committed ourselves to a life together. It's not like some LP where you, you stick your favourite songs and ignore the rest. You've got to take it as it comes, all of it, good, bad and ugly. I know that, but... Let's face it, Eddie. We're not talking about me here or the baby. This is all about you. You're so scared of ending up stuck here on your own. You'd happily wheel me into Aussie for in a bush. How selfish can you get? Come in. Uh, shoes. What? Shoes off. How come you got the keys to this place, then? Well, Barry lets me have the run of the gaff, doesn't he, you know? For business purposes, like. All right. Fancy a coffee? Yeah, it's all right. I don't suppose you know how to work one of these contraptions, do you, right? Sorry. Mm, so do. Tea, do you? Fine. So what am I doing here, then? Well, it's about our relationship. What relationship? Exactly. I think we should have one. Oh, yeah? Yeah? You proposing? Oh, listen, Carl, I know you think you're dead funny and all that, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to do you a favour here. Any chance of talking English, Jimmy? See? This is what I mean. 
Look, ever since Barry took you on, we've done nothing but moan at each other like a pair of old women. Do you know that? And whose fault's that? Doesn't matter whose fault it is. The point is this. If Barry gets back and susses that we've been spending more time at each other's throats than we have been running the club, well, we're going to be out on our jacksies. Do you know that? He wouldn't just sack us. <laughs> Do you want to bet? So what are you saying, then? What I'm saying is, why don't we muck in together? Hmm? See if we can't work as a team. Make life a lot easier, you know. No more after arguments. Scouts on it. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, who the hell's that now? And what are you doing here? I'm having a meeting. What are you doing here? I'm here to do me cleaning. And since when have you had meetings in here? Since. Since never. Got the run of the gaff, have you? Too right, I have to be taking any notice of Mrs. Mop here. So do you want me to tell Barry when he gets back the anthill mob have been in? No, he's busy. He doesn't want you buzzing away in his ear. So then sling your hook. We're having our tea first. Well, be quick. I want to shampoo this carpet. Nice one, partner. Do you want a tea? Nah. And about in a minute and get some paint. Fine, well, you've got the bit between your teeth, haven't you? Listen, when Rachel sees this place, she's going to kick the door down to get back home. We hope. Well, I thought I might pick up a few rolls of kiddies wallpaper while I'm out. Make a start on the little room for Babyface Nelson when he arrives. Great. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> You're going to have to watch yourself, you know. How's that? I could get used to you doing all the shopping for me. Feel free. <laughs> I don't want to start taking you for granted. Well, I think it might be a welcome change from the reverse being the case. Oh, don't you think it's time we put your hair shirt in the wash? I think it's about time I realised how fortunate I am to have such a wonderful, caring and understanding wife. I'm glad you said that. Well, it's true. Because I've made a decision. About us? No, about Rachel. I've told her she can stay here indefinitely. Oh. Don't you think we should have discussed it first? What's there to discuss? Whether we both want her to stay. Oh, but the point is, I want her to stay. And as discussed, if we are abiding by my house rules, she stays. Any joy? Too right. You what? Well, I've sussed them out. They haven't said a blind word to Barry Grant. How do you know? Well, I eavesdropped. As far as I can see, he seems to have disappeared off the face of the earth. So all this flora stuff is a load of old cobblers? Exactly. Right. What now? Well, we shut this graveyard for a couple of hours, get next door and start ordering stock. We're back in business. <clears throat> oh, well, well, if it isn't Maxi von Conman, I think you'll find the humble pie next to the Weetabix. What are you talking about? You haven't heard from Barry Grant any more than I have, but I bet the numbers on your mobile phone are worn out trying, aren't they? My, what big ears you've got, Beverly. Yes, but he's right. We haven't heard a peep from Barry. If you'll excuse me, I've got a florist to run. Until about half an hour ago. When he got back from Disney World. And after a very brief but friendly chat about business, he, um, he faxed us this. Just so we had it in writing. You know, isn't technology a marvellous thing? Flaming hell. No hard feelings? Well, shall we head next door? Yes, why not? Well, some spy you turned out to be. Gonna be late for work. Oh, God, I look wrecked. Sorry, Bob. Hey. You're right. I'm scared. I'm selfish. <laughs> but it's not the thought of being on my own that gets me. No. It's the thought of you not being there. Baby, don't you know? Do you? 
Jack, of course. I, I'm just worried that you rush headlong into it when I think about what might happen to you. Hey, look. Everything you panicked about, I've panicked about. But compared to the chance of us having another little one, risk seems like nothing. Our oh, baby in there. Don't you think that's brilliant? <laughs> hey, we're gonna be all right. I hope so. Hey, take my word for it. <laughs> hey, but it'll be a little smash yet. <laughs> well, if it's anything like it's dad, I'll have no problem. Who was that? Uh, it was nothing. Nothing? I was uh, just making sure that our wreath had been delivered. Oh, look, I've managed to get the spot out of your tie. Oh, good, good, thank you. And Rachel's finished with the bathroom if you want to shave. Splendid. How did she seem? Remarkably well, considering. I'm glad to hear it, but uh, quite honestly, at a time like this, she should really be at home with her mother. Unfortunately, that's not possible. I mean, all we can do is to provide her with a roof over her head and a square meal. It's hardly a substitute for parental care. Oh, can't you do that downstairs? <gasps> Nearly finished now. I'm just going to call for Rachel. Oh. OK, son. Hang on a minute, love. Let's have a look at you. Oh, you're not going like that, are you, love? Yeah. It's a funeral, not a fussy match. Oh, do you think Gary's going to be bothered? As long as I turn up. Fair enough, love. See you later, eh? Might as well wear me leathers, then. You will not. I don't know what we're going there for, anyway. I mean, Audrey was hardly our busy mate. Thank you, Mr Sympathy. Well... But you know why we're going? Cos Jean Crosby asked us. And I didn't have the art to turn her down. Still... It's an excuse to skive off work, I suppose. Every cloud has a silver lining. Aye. And as soon as we've seen Mrs. Manners off, we're getting straight down to the doctor's for a full checkup. Oh, Ed. Sooner the better. I can't today. I've got things to do. What's more important than your health, love? For God's sake, I've had about two million checkups for that blame and plague business. What's that got to do with it? This is our kid we're talking about. Look, I'm all right. I'll make myself an appointment in my own good time. Right, that's uh, £7.53, please, Mick. Cheers, man. Ta. Hiya. All right, Oh, thanks for Gary then, Harvey. Yeah. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. Hey, don't forget your eggs. Poor lad. What eggs? Dad, them eggs for him, will you, love? Know. Spend anything over a fiver, you get two free eggs. Oh, right. Oh, thanks. Still, could be any of us there now, couldn't it? Hey? You know, Gary. Yeah, I suppose so. Makes you wonder, doesn't it, eh? It really does. Still, at least you got a bargain with your flowers. God knows how much a wreath and cost next door. Yeah, okay. See ya. Yeah, I'll get that. 
Oh, that's all right, man. No, 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 no. All right, thanks, man. We know a valued customer when we see one. Now, listen, you just remember, anything you want, flowers, cards, a lot, you come to me, OK? And if we haven't got it in stock, we'll get it for you. Thanks. How does it look? Superb. Absolutely superb. I'll see you. Yeah, to the Mick. Morning, thing. Hey, Mick. Snap. Great time. Morning. Oh, all right, Bing. Now, ah, now, let me guess. Uh, Mr. Bing? Beg your pardon? Max. Sorry. So, how goes it? Great. Uh, excuse me, can I help you? Funny, ha, ha. Only we don't open until Friday. Really? And they'll be shut by Monday. Mm. Uh, sorry, what was that? Nothing, nothing. So, what's all the brown paper in Ada? Ah, well, you'll have to ask my wife about that. She's the creative genius around here. Is that right, is it? Yes. A couple of months' time, she'll have Richard Branson quaking in his boots. You still haven't told us what the brown paper's for. Well, we thought we'd go for that air of mystery. Well, it's working because nobody's going to have a blind clue what you're selling. Psychology. You know what they say? Anticipation is nine-tenths the pleasure. Really? Well, I anticipate I could do with a pot noodle down my neck. Come on. Any chance of a sneak preview? Well, there's not much to look at yet, but come in. Come on. Ah, see what you mean. <laughs> but do you think it's wise to risk incurring the wrath of your fellow local traders? Wise? I haven't enjoyed myself so much in years. Thomas, look who's come to see us. Hello, Linda. <laughs> Hello, old son. I didn't see you tucked away there. So, what do you think of Mummy's new shop, then? Do you think she's going to have it all ready by Friday? Well, I know we've got our work cut out. But Patricia's planned out the displays. And virtually all the stock's here. So we're practically up and running as it is. Oh, good. Good, that's excellent. But I don't suppose it gives you very much in the way of free time, though, does it? <laughs> no. Why? Well, I was wondering if you might consider coming to Audrey's funeral with me. Oh, um, well, I've got quite a lot of work on at the restaurant. And I've got a hell of a lot to sort out here. Oh, no matter. I understand. Well, I'd best be off. Sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Um, and, uh, if you do need someone to supply a spot of elbow grease... Oh, cheers. Have a good time. I, I mean... Bye, Dad. Bye. Bye, Thomas. Bye, Grandma. Oh, dear. Poor Audrey. We, uh... Well, we didn't really know the woman. Come on, you. Nose back to the grindstone. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about your mum being pregnant, then? Oh, it's doing me head in a bit. Oh, join the club. I mean, she's a grandma. Oh, still, at least it's your dad's. I'm gonna end up with some scabby stepsister. No, so good. Yeah. Oh, he's all dressed in the proper gear. Oh, it doesn't matter. Hey, she's right. It's what you feel about comes next. Yeah, well, I feel like a tramp. Hey, you look fine. Anyway, I believe the congratulations are in order. What for? Well, Leo tells me I'm ours having a baby. Hold that, yeah. To show you, eh? All right, sir. All right, Meg. Do you mind if we wait outside for you? Yeah, feel free. Go on, son. Oh, yeah? Things no better than No, she's still keeping it bings. No, I'm sorry, mate. Ah, oh, but what can you do? Anyway, have you had the latest? What's that? Well, it looks like Rosie Banks has come out of sympathy with your Mandy. How do you mean? She's up the duff. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> that must be catching, unless there's another virus going now. Don't say that, mate. No, oh, sorry. You going to Gary's funeral? Yeah. Are you taking the kids? Just our Leo. I've packed him off to a mate. I didn't want him to come, really, but he wouldn't be told. Mm, time to take the old cotton wool off, eh, like? Yeah. Welcome to the real world, eh? Hmm. So you're in a hurry? What kind of, yeah? Yeah, it's just that I'm on the scrounge. What for? Well, you've got one of them steamer stripper things, haven't you? Yeah, do you want it on? Oh, thanks very much, yeah. Well, call back later and I'll dig it off for you. Okay, nice one. Oh, so you're doing a bit then? Yeah, it's all for Miss Prim's benefit. Oh, right. Yeah, I'll put a smile back on her face if it kills me. Later, sir. See you later. Ready? When you are. Right, then. Jean. Mm hmm. Uh, look, in keeping with our newfound spirit of detente, I'm afraid I do have a small confession to make. Oh, God, not another one. Look, don't get me wrong on this, right? Rachel is welcome to stay here for as long as she needs to. I know she is. Nevertheless, I do feel that someone ought to take a longer-term view of her future. Well, could you possibly get on with it? Well, with that in mind, I have made a few, all, albeit tentative, inquiries to the council. Concerning what? Concerning possible accommodation for a girl in Rachel's position. What? Just to see how the land would lie once she decides to move on. 
Do you know, sometimes I could... The chap I spoke to there was very positive. There's a lot of help available. Then you'd better speak to him again, because the way things are going, you're going to be the one that's going to need the flat. Jean, I was just trying to be practical. She is staying here. Listen, my darling, don't you think that you might be getting just a little too involved? She is only a neighbour, after all. And this from the man who hightailed it to London in search of her. That was hardly the same thing. Oh, come on, let's get going, Audrey. You'll have decomposed at this rate. What are you doing now? Well, since I've got to hang fire on the wallpaper strip, and I thought I'd make a start on the skating board. Don't you ever stop? No. And once the emulsion's dry in the extension, I'm going to give that another lick as well. The little palace before you know it. Our little palace. Yeah. What do you reckon? Oh, it's really sweet. Yeah. I might keep in here myself. Should look great. And once I've raided the Disney shop, you're not going to be able to move in here for toys. Just hope I'm around to see it all finished. Oh, you will. We all will. Me, you, Beth, the baby. And Rachel. Hello. I must say, it's a rather good turnout. Yes, Audrey was a pillar of the community. Yes, I suppose she was, really. Always ready to lend a hand where necessary. <coughs> I don't think that's necessary. Sorry. We are in the house of God, after all. Yes, and I expect we'll be seeing a lot more of the inside of this place over the next few years. How so? You may not realise it, but we are about to embark upon that hideous time when death becomes a way of life. You know, your morbid fixation with mortality is beyond me at times. You see, all our friends will start dropping like flies, so you better get used to it now. Could we possibly change the subject? Ah, oh, the bags. Thank you for coming. Good people. Good enough to put up Rachel Jordash without question a few weeks ago. Temporarily, as we are doing now. Except, of course, you would rather see her homeless. Which is exactly where she will be if we don't make adequate provision for the day she tires of lodging with two old grave dodgers. I mean, she may never want to go back to her mother. I'm sure she won't want to stay on the bungalow ad infinitum. Now listen, Jean. I've managed to get hold of a couple of addresses which we could recce straight after the service, if you like. Keen, aren't you? It's a contingency plan, that's all. I don't care what kind of a plan it is. I am not going to go wandering round some woe-begotten flea pit with a view to offloading a half-broken young girl who put her total trust in us. Oh, for heaven's sake. You're making me sound like some kind of heartless monster. You haven't got a monopoly of caring, you know. You may think that I'm an insensitive old fool, but I have some inkling of what that poor girl has gone through. Yes, I know you have. And I don't consider it's a heinous crime on my part to at least consider what the future might hold for her. Fair enough. So, would you mind coming and having a look at these places with me? All right. But on the first sign of mildew... Okay, just there. Right. Thanks, Ray. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Got the last delivery. Certainly is. Well, let's hope we'll be ordering loads more stuff in a couple of weeks' time, eh? Well, it's either that or the bankruptcy court. Please, Max, I'm not even in jest. <laughs> hey, don't panic. Look, you've done a superb job planning this lot out. Do you think so? Yeah, I do. And the bank manager thinks so, and uh, so will Barry when he gets back. Oh, there's something else to worry about. Well, you leave him to me. Yeah, but what if he just closes us down on the spot? He won't. Look, by the time he gets back from the States, this place will be packing them in, and all he wants to hear is the sound of the till ringing. It is going to work, isn't it? With you in charge, how could it possibly fail? <laughs> Eyes left. 
I think we have a couple of industrial spies in our midst. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. Not bad at all. You can't be serious. At 16, I'd have given my eye teeth to have it in digs like this. It's cold. Obviously, he hasn't been lived in for a while. What on earth is that awful noise? <laughs> I think that Reg will probably give as good as she gets on that score. Oh, her place is depressing. There's nothing wrong with it. Maybe not for some middle-aged travelling salesman to come back to one night a week. Not for a 16-year-old girl with no money stuck here night after night. You wouldn't want it for your own daughter, would you? Rachel isn't my daughter. That is not the point. Oh, I've seen enough. I'm going home. Smarmy, get. I wouldn't worry, love. I mean, the place looked like a bomb, did it? Yeah, those two couldn't run an egg and spoon race, never mind a shop. I mean, what was she looking at anyway? Birthday cards. I don't know, but whatever it was, we're going to be flogging twice as many next week and for half the price. I can't see them getting that lot ready by Good Friday. Yeah, well, whatever happens Friday, they are going to regret the day that they ever put the mockers on Ron Dixon's Mini Mart. Why? What are you going to do? The gloves are off, babe. I'm going to war. Good grace to view a couple of the other options. David, this is becoming very tedious. Oh, you're back. How are you? I thought I'd be okay, but when they buried him. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> all I could think of was my dad. I know, I know. Oh, first my dad and now Gary. What have I done wrong? Absolutely nothing. Shall I make us some tea? Good idea. Be two ticks. Come on, blow that nosey. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I just... There's nothing to be sorry for. Go on, you have a good old cry. I just don't understand. What? Why is all this happening to me? I wish I could tell you. But all I do know is that you mustn't blame yourself. None of this is even remotely your fault. I promise you. Oh, hey, love. How'd it go? Just dead sad. Yeah. Mum. What? You know, if I died... Me? Hey. Would you have us cremated? Because I don't fancy being buried in some box. <sighs> want to be in a vase sat in front of the telly instead, eh? No, I just don't want to be worm food. Nobody's going to be doing any dying round here. Now go and make yourself a butty, eh? Yeah. Shouldn't you be getting Simba to do all the fetching and carrying in your condition? <laughs> How are you, anyway? Oh, fine. I believe you've, um, had a bit of news myself. Travels fast, doesn't it? Sorry, I didn't mean to be nosy. Oh, as if us 40-something mums-to-be have got to stick together, haven't we? So how far gone are you? Seven weeks. You pleased? Well, uh, I'm getting there. Yeah, me too. Tell you what, these dirty old men we've got ourselves lumbered with have got a lot to answer for. Yeah. Although I have to say, Simba's been brilliant. Yeah. And he's getting there and all. It's just he's a bit OTT about the health side of things. Have you seen anyone yet? No. You? Yeah, I got the all clear. Oh, good. Hetty's latest crackpot theory is the baby could be affected by that virus thing. God, I never even thought of that. You know, well, you've probably had other stuff to worry about. Yeah, like whether I'm going to be giving birth in hospital or prison. Yeah, uh, anyway, if you ever want to pop in and swap knitting patterns or compare stretch marks, know what I am. Thanks. All right, take it easy now. Another biscuit. 
Oh, thanks. Feeling better? Yeah, Tab. What's Mr. Crosby doing in the loft? Heaven knows. David, your tea's getting cold. Good luck with you. That's what getting old does for you. Send you off your rocker. <laughs> right. What have you been doing? Sorting out our entertainment for the afternoon. What? Well, uh, I think we've had enough doom and gloom for one day, so if Rachel is up to it, I thought we could while away a couple of hours over a hot scrabble board. Oh. So, young lady, dare you oppose the might of the Crosby intellect? Sounds like there's a gauntlet being thrown down to me. OK, you're on. <sighs> Go on, son. You let it all out. <laughs> Oh, Shelley, Mick, should I, um... No, no, it's just the funeral got to my bed, that's all. Hi, Lee. It's crap, isn't it, eh? Yeah. I'll be all right in a minute. Listen, so do you want to go and get changed and we'll go and pick Jenny? Yeah. Right. I never took on that. Big grim, was he? Well, it's one thing to see your nan or someone get buried, but a teenage kid? Right, you're steaming. Yeah, cheers. So, uh, big boss job, is it? Well, I'm doing up the extension for Rachel if she ever comes back. I'm getting the nursery done for the new arrival. Already? Well, there's no time like the present. Nah, if you say so. Yeah, with this trial coming up, I want to get everything spot on as soon as I can. Any idea when the case comes up? No, not yet. Must be a bummer trying to plan for a kid with all that hanging over you. I don't even think about it, Mick. I'm just concentrating on Mandy and that little lump she's carrying. If it turns out to be anything like you. <laughs> God forbid. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> Zit. Yeah, you know, a spot. I am vaguely aware of the meaning of the word, but I think you'll find that's a colloquialism more likely to be found on the shop floor than within the rarefied confines of the concise Oxford English. Oh, it's a defo word, Zit. We'll see. Dictionary, please. I think you'll find that Rachel's right. Right, we'll have a look. Give him enough rope. Ah, oh, here we are. Zit. Noun. Pimple. Spot. Blemish. Brill, that's, oh, 10, 11, 12, and a triple word score. 36, and you're in the lead. Great. Um, I'll just go to the loo. Still wanting to hand out the eviction notice? Of course not. You're really rather enjoying yourself, aren't you? <laughs> I must say, it does rather bring back memories of Patsy romping around the place. And as I recall, she used to hammer you at Scrabble, too. <laughs> so, what next? Cluda. No. I mean about Rachel. What are we going to do about her? Ah. Well, you were right. I realised that when I saw her in tears. She's our responsibility now. As long as she's under our roof, however hard it is, we have to be as near as damn it mother and father to her. She needs us. It's as simple as that. Mand? Mandy! What you doing a bit of stepping? <laughs> I've got it. What's the matter? Nothing. Pull the other one. What's the matter? It's all this. Seeing you putting your heart and soul into getting everything just right for our child and, and knowing that I'll never be able to sit here and feed it or change it. Yes, you will. I won't. They're going to lock me up. I'm going to lose you, the girls, everything. Oh, just wait and see, eh? <laughs> What's the point? The point is in there. And no matter what happens, I'm going to keep this family together for you. 
I'll adopt Rachel if I have to. This is our home. And I'm going to wait here for you for as long as it takes. Me and the baby. Why are you so good to me? Because I love you, you divvy. <laughs> <laughs>